Have you ever had to install these recessed lights? They're affordable, they're pretty easy to install. Some people call them wafer or puck lights, but they're LED and they've really taken the market by storm. The problem with them is they don't really come with any type of airtight box or fixture like the old school recessed lights do. Let me show you how we attack this problem. I'll take you through it step by step. Our first steps happen during the framing stages. Now this can be in a new construction or remodeling phase. Um, basically we take two by four blocking and we place it strategically in between the bottom cords of the truss. And then we cap it with a lid of some sort. In this case, it's 5 8 OSB, the same as the roof decking, just because we had some left over. And before we install that lid, if you will, we install some big stretch by Sashko, some caulking on top, and then sandwich this lid into it. And then just some real quick and easy finish nails right on top down through the bottom cord and the blocking. Then we come underneath, more big stretch from Sash Co. all the way around the perimeter inside and where the wires penetrate for the lighting. So that's going to do two things. That's going to help create an airtight box for the fixture, but it's also going to continue to keep your valuable insulation where it belongs, in the attic. So you're not gonna have to worry about insulation falling down in your face if you were to ever have to change out the ballast or the light. So keep that in mind. But that is the first step that we take. And we do lay out these uh, strategically. You can see we have several in this room. Don't mind the fact that it's blue, it's just a tarp hanging up and light shining through it. But you can see we've got quite a bit of drywall hung already and we have light boxes all over. This is going to be a shop, so it's gonna be lit up really well. We wanted recessed lights all over this shop. So we have placed these strategically, and that is the first step, figuring out where you want your lights and basically creating a pattern for them. So we've got them all wired up, we've got them all caulked into place and air sealed. The next thing we make sure to do is install drywall adhesive. This is gonna air seal between our air sealed box or enclosure for our light and the bottom of the drywall. So we're just using this great stuff, construction adhesive. It says right on the can, great for drywall. And we've been using it for years for drywall, never had a problem. So you can see how he's going around that box. And that's basically going to air seal between the bottom of the drywall and the bottom of those, uh, that blocking there. Also, we love drywall lifts. Save your back. Is that way good enough? Now we're to the step that we need to cut our holes in the drywall. We've hung the drywall. We have located the light fixture enclosures. Uh, we've got one marked out right here. That's a critical step in this. I like to take um, a scrap piece of paper or something and write down all of the locations of the light enclosures before we start hanging drywall. That way you know you're not going to accidentally cover one up and not be able to find one. So hopefully that makes sense. But we've got one located right here and what I'm gonna use to cut the hole is this Rotozip tool. Now, um, they do not make this attachment anymore. They might not even make the Rotozip tool. And it's a shame, it's corded. I would love to use my Flex cordless one, but they do not have uh, an attachment like this for that rotary tool. And this thing I have had for many, many years. In fact, I loved it so much that I bought a second one just sitting in the box for when this one takes out on me. But you can see right here, it has numbers and those represent inches. So I've got it set to just about the six inch mark, but I'll tell you what I do. I like to take um, a test core sample out of just a scrap piece of drywall and test fit the light in that sample drywall before I ever cut anything in the hole. That way I know for a fact that I've got the hole cut properly because just because it says it's a six inch or a five inch LED or uh, wafer light 
doesn't mean that it you need to cut the hole exactly six inches. I found that out the hard way over the years. So make sure and cut test holes with this device if you have one of these. If you don't have access to one of these, you can simply use a hole saw, something of that nature if you've got one that um, big enough. But the key is to center this thing up. So we've got the center of our light location marked and now I'm ready to cut. That's another, that's another point I wanted to bring out. When I make my schematic or my drawing on my piece of paper, I make sure that I'm locating not just the box, but the center of where I want the light to land. So the light can land off center inside the enclosure, like most of these will, but I want it to be symmetrical in the room. So hopefully that makes sense when I'm designing this or wiring this up and building these enclosures. You don't have to land the light dead center of each enclosure. It can go anywhere inside that air sealed enclosure. Just have to make sure that it's symmetrical in the room. So in this instance, I think it's, what is it? 34 inches, I believe off of this wall and 36 inches off that wall, something of that nature. It's the same all the way around. And it's the same with each light location within the entire space. All of them are in the same spot, regardless of where my trusses have landed, I figured out where I need to put those enclosures. So just keep that in mind. We'll go ahead and cut this. I'll show you how easy this thing works. Once again, I've already got my hole drilled right here with my roto zip. You just simply drill a little hole right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and route it out. There we go. Now, because that's 5 8 drywall and my bit's not quite long enough, you'll have to go ahead and knock it out. A lot of times, if you're using half inch drywall, it, this little circle will just fall out. So be mindful of that. Now, all I have to do is reach up in here, grab the wires that I installed. Now, I can cut some of those off and I can wire up my light fixture. How convenient is that? I always go ahead and knock this dust off. You're going to want to do that before you start priming and painting, especially if you're using like an airless spray rig, um, because that can kind of cut, feed out of there and get on the drywall, your finish. So you don't want that, but that's how you do it. Um, we'll go ahead and wire up a light real quick, show you how that's done. All right, that's done. Quick, easy, simple. You can see how easily that uh, installs now. The drywall finisher, if he wants to pull that light out, he can just unplug it real quick. Uh, when it comes time to painting, for painting, he can just tuck the wires up and unplug the light. But uh, that's how quick and easy it is. And now, if there were to be something that goes wrong with that light or that driver, the installer, the electrician, you, the homeowner, if you need to replace it, you're not having insulation drop down in your face. That's happened plenty of times to me before uh, by previous installers that didn't install an airtight enclosure. And you're not losing all of your conditioned air. You're not having hot, humid, or um, unfiltered air come into your conditioned space. So lots of benefits to doing it this way. Just thought I would share my method. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up please like and subscribe. I really, really appreciate all the support on the channel. More tips and tricks coming soon. Stay tuned.